2013. And we thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend with the Greater New Hope Church International. Today's Holy Spirit messenger is co-pastor Brenda Moore. The Holy Spirit message is entitled, We Cannot Serve Two Masters. She will be coming from the King James Version of the Bible. The background scripture will be taken from Matthew 6 and 24. Again, if you didn't get the title, the Holy Spirit message is entitled, We Cannot Serve Two Masters masters again we thank you for joining us please open your hearts and minds to be fed and filled with the word of god know that the lord gives strength into his people and the lord blesses his people with peace psalms 29 and 11. no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and men Amen. Matthew 6 and 24. Thank you. Amen. 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 God is good. And, and the more, you know, the more we go through, the better God looks. The more secure we are. The greater our faith grows. The greater the love, as, as, as co-pastor Barnes talked about this morning. The greater... So those trials and tribulations that come upon us, that's nothing for God. Amen. But what he wants us to do is to believe in him and trust him enough to exercise that measure of faith that he has given unto each of us. And then when we begin to do that, then we begin to do just what the message says. We don't serve two masters because we can't. We cannot serve two masters with greater new hope. No matter what you say, and the things that are happening in your life, they're happening for a reason so that God can begin to prune you because whether we know it or not, most of us are serving two masters. We are serving two masters. You, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. It's not that you're there and you're there all the time, but kind of we kind of slip in, in and out depending upon what's going on in our lives and the circumstances. But God want to get us to the point that we are always serving him. And, and that's where that faith come in at. No matter what happens, he's got it under control. We say it's in his hands. We got to leave it in his hands. We got to believe that it's in his hands. Amen. And that's what this message is all about this morning. It's not condemning you for, for serving two masters. He already know that. It's not anything that he doesn't know. He knows each and every one of us. He knows the ins and outs about all of us. We do not fool God. Okay? So, so don't think that it, this is a personal thing because the word says in 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 27, let me, let me get that for you so that you understand this two-edged sword that I'm talking about. It isn't just not about you, it's about us as well. And the word says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, it says, but I keep under my body and bring it unto submission, into submission. Least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So that's not just to the preacher. It's, it's even to, to the choir director as she directs these songs. She's the one who chooses those songs for them to sing. So if she's not believing in that, if she's not saying what it is that God wants her to say, the same thing applies to her, and it, it applies to those of us who preach and teach. So, so that two-edged sword, it's, God is pruning us even as we study, even as we preach to you. He's coming right back at us. So you can't serve two masters. We cannot serve two masters. So if you are halted between two opinions, this morning after this message, you go to God in prayer for yourself. Don't ask anybody else to go in prayer for you. You go into prayer for yourself because you know what you're wrestling with. You know those things that are kind of have you tied up in knots and you don't want to let loose some things. Whether it's some things you do or some things you have done that keep coming back in your presence, some thoughts you have, some actions you have, 
See, we can't serve God and sin. We can't serve God and Satan. We cannot serve God and manner. We cannot. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon your children this morning, Father. We just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for everything that you've given unto each and every one of us. Father, we just continue to bless your name and continue to bless you as you continue to bless us. We glorify you. We glorify Jesus Christ, holy and righteous is his name. Father God, we ask that you be with us as we, as we teach and preach this message this morning. Use each and every one of us, Father, not just the minister who's going to bring forth the word, but the minister who's going to read the word and the minister who is also going to, Father, just, just bless us. Bless us. Holy Spirit, fall fresh. In Jesus Christ's holy and righteous name I pray. Amen. Now, when I was beginning to study this, and, and, and the Spirit had given me this message like maybe three, four weeks ago, and I just sometimes jot things down. And, and so when I was praying, you know, for the Spirit to tell me exactly what it was that I was supposed to speak on this morning, he just dropped it right in my face. And, and, and I, I, I had been listening. My grandson, Ronald, had given me a, a CD of one of his that he had been listening to. And, and a young artist just up and coming, and I think his name is Jonathan, Jonathan McReynolds. But anyway... One of the songs on that CD that I kept playing over and over and over again, and again, this is how God works. And the song is entitled, No Gray. And what it really boils down to is that you can't serve two masters. There are no gray areas. See, we tend to want to say things are a little shaded here and a little shaded there, or we make excuses because if, if, certainly if I'm doing it, I'm going to make an excuse why I can do it. Okay, so that justifies why I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing. But according to God, he said, no, you can't serve two masters. It was just read, but I'll read it for you again in Matthew 6 and, and, and 24. And it says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve two masters. And so what happens when, when we are halted between those two opinions, we tend to give, give favor to one or the other. One or the other. So, so it's, it's like when the Holy Spirit says, get up and pray. Do you get up and pray? Or do you say, well, no, nah, my story is coming on. I've been waiting. They, this, tonight's going to be the finale, and I've been waiting on this for all, all season. All season, so I'm going I'm to listen to this finale, or I'm going to look at this finale, and when it's over, then I'm going to get to praying. I'm going to get to praying about whatever it is that God wants me to pray about. But see, God is giving you, he's giving you a command. And he's giving that for you to be obedient right now. And because you're not obedient, maybe whatever the reason he was going to have you to pray has already happened has already happened. And, and we got to get to the point that our relationship with God is so tight that when the Holy Spirit gives us a, a command that we immediately do it. We're not asking God why. We just have to be obedient in order to do that that he has called us to do because God got everything in order. He's controlling everything. He knows why he's asked you to do something or he's told you to do something. The choice is whether or not you want to be obedient. And if you choose not to be obedient, and that is your choice. He's not going to make you. You wait for God to knock you out the chair? I mean, not that he can't. He can. But are you waiting for him to knock you out of the chair and knock you on your knees before you get down on your knees and pray? Are you waiting for him to have something happen to you before you begin to want to serve him? He's giving you all things. All things. This morning's prayer, this morning's song, great is thy faithfulness. Wow. Great is thy faithfulness towards us. If we were just as faithful to him 
as he is to us. Even when we mess up, great is thy faithfulness. Wow. He just keeps right on keeping us, loving us, embracing us, encouraging us, sending anointed labors to you, putting the word in front of you. God uses every available means he can to get your attention. And guess what? He knows we all are in the same place, so he gives us all something different. It could be the billboard on the street. It could be the piece of paper on the floor that you bend down and pick it up, and there it is, right in your face. You know it. You know that it's from God, and you know that it was meant for you. Now, you can ignore it. Or at that moment of time, you can begin to do just what the Holy Spirit is giving you an unction to do. And that's your choice. That's your choice. We're only, all of us are only going to be here for a short period of time. The one thing that I realize is the older I get, the more I want to keep living. Because life is just now getting good. Life is just now getting good. I thought I knew what life was about in my teens and my 20s and my 30s and my 40s and even my 50s. Yeah. Only to find out I didn't really know too much or nothing. Life is just now getting good. And see, what, what happened is because we won't be led by the Spirit to do the things that he's caused us to do, then we look up and we're not able because things happen. Things happen in our life to keep us from being able to serve him yes. like he wants us to serve him. And I know I don't want to die without serving him. I don't want to die without serving him. And since I don't know when that day nor that hour is, I need to be about my father's business now. We say here at New Hope, all the time. This is the day that the Lord has made. We sung it this morning. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And we don't we, we just don't pay any attention to it. We say it like it's a ritual. Do you mean what you say? Do you mean that? See, that's part of serving those two masters. You mean it when you want something. When you want God to bless you with something, when you want him to give you something, then you want everybody to know that this is what I believe. But as soon as he does that, or if he doesn't do it according to how you feel it ought to be done, then you go back to serving your other master. You know who your masters are. Every last one of us in here know that. Is it of sin? Is it of Satan? Or is it of God? And we've just got to get, we have to get drawn so close to God in our relationship that we begin to let those other things go. Whatever they are, whatever they are, are we spending, are we spending even an hour a day praying, meditating, reading the scripture? How much is an hour? We have 24. And I'll talk about me. You've heard me say it many, many times. I love to read. But I'm going to be honest. And sometimes I'll pick up a book in the middle of the night if I wake up. Before I pick up the Bible. What master am I serving? I don't have to examine you. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 says, will a, paraphrasing, will a man examine himself? You write it down and you read it and study it and see what that word says about that. Will a man examine himself? We're so busy looking at other people talking about what they're not doing and what they are doing, whether it be right or wrong, that we won't even look at ourselves. And he said, look at you. Examine yourself. Who are you serving? Who are you serving? Most of us are so serving that God can't even use us. He just wants
wants us to draw closer to him. James 4 and 8, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Nigh is near. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. We don't want things to happen. We don't want things to happen. Minister Barnes said, co-pastor Barnes said this morning, read Romans 8. Well, when I was studying, that's the same scripture that the Spirit gave me. For New Hope to study Romans 8 in its entirety. That's the same scripture that the Spirit gave me. So this coming week, as she had said, take some time. If you don't read nothing else, you got from now until we commence with Bible study again on the 13th. Read it. 37 verses. 37 verses. Take three a night. Study them. Write them down. Wherever the, wherever the Spirit leads you to the next scripture, go to it. Go to it. Because the, the Spirit is going to lead you where you need to go. Where you need to go. Now, Co-Pastor Barnes is the teacher, so she's going to be all over the place. But he's going to tell you what you need to know so that you can begin to serve him. Not me. You're not my servant. You're his servant. I didn't call you. He did. Let's get that clear. So those of us who like to hold people in bondage as if we got something that they don't have, let's, let, let's make that plain. Let's make that plain. We are all God's children. One has no precedence over the other, meaning one is no greater than the other. Jesus Christ was equal to God, but he never, ever, ever thought he was equal. He made himself humble unto God as his father. Now, who are we? Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we begin to understand that, then God can begin to, to just move and, and, and have, have his way. We, we sing those songs, but I think sometimes we don't, we don't really take them in. Sometimes we get, and I'm so thankful that New Hope, we don't have no band. And, and the reason I'm thankful about that is because we get to listen. I, I'm hard of hearing. So sometimes the, the music, the background get too loud, I don't even catch the word. And I don't even try. And so what happens then is all of a sudden I get caught up in the movement. And I'm beginning to sway back and forth. Has nothing to do with the song. Nothing. Let me tell you what the Spirit, I, I'm, I'm going with what the Spirit is telling me to say, but I study. Let me tell you, in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 31 and 3, it said, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. That's what he said back in the Old Testament to the Israelites. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. Here in the New Testament, he's saying, John 12 and 32, and it's saying, Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will I draw all men unto me. So he was there in the Old Testament. He sent Jesus for the New Testament. And in doing that, he's already made it clear that we cannot serve two masters. And so that loving kindness that he's talking about, he's talking about a, a, a steadfast love, a love that's full of grace and mercy that he's given unto us, his faithfulness unto us. That's what he's showing us, his goodness. It's showing us his devotion to us, to us, his devotion to us. Where is your devotion to him? Where does it come in at? At the end of your day? At the end of your week? At the end of your month? Two, three years from now, when he done bless you according to what you think. As great as anything is that we think about anything, as great as a, a, an edifice or a church or a tabernacle is, it is not nothing compared to what God has. Nothing. We saw in the psalm this morning about the temple. Lord, have your way. Co-Pastor Barnes explained that to you very clear. Who is the temple? But we get caught up in wanting to serve the building. We get caught up in wanting to serve greater new hope. What's greater new hope without God? What are you without God? Nothing. So how are you going to serve something?
nothing if you don't serve God and think that you're not nothing. How do you do that? How do you do that? How dare we become that arrogant? How dare? You know, when people get arrogant with us and dare us, we want to take them out by any means possible. You certainly want to get them straight. Guess what? If God was like that, where would we be? With our little puny little self up against God. Who do we think we are? Who do we think we are? Who do you think God is? Do you, do you reverence him? Do you know that he is the master? Do you know, you, you know how these kids play with these little, well, not just kids, adults too now, play these games? You got the controllers and you're doing all this? That's what you are to God. He's the hands on the controller. And you the little ping pong going back and forth. But what begins to happen is when we allow him to do it, then we're, we're on a good course. But when we allow Satan to do it or sin to do it, we're all over the place. You know how you, when you don't have no aim, it's here, it's there, it's there. That's what happens when we're serving two masters. When we're serving two masters, when we're going from gray today to a darker shade of gray tomorrow to maybe white the next day, bounce back over to black the next day, and then maybe go to gray later on in the afternoon. Later on. As we serve in these two gods. And see, what, what at, at, at the end of the day, it's all about truth. And we talk about worshiping God in spirit and truth. Do you really, really, do you really mean that? Or is it just a formality that you're going through? Is it just some words that you're saying? Or are you really, really ready to do that? So that, and if you are, when he chastises you, how do you feel about it? Are you in a state of denial? Well, Lord, I didn't really do it. I didn't, I didn't really mean it like that. Okay. Well, that master that you served said you did. And we did. And we just have to know that everything that we say and do, God knows. He knows why. He knows the motive. He knows. He's not surprised by anything that we say and do. And we say that all the time, but, but we, we don't, we, I don't know that we really understand that. Minister Barnes, can you get for me, and this is going to be in 2 Timothy, and I'll get, give you time to find it. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, and the ninth verse. The second Timothy, the first chapter, and the ninth verse. and we read about Genesis in the beginning, even before that, they were. And when I say they were, I'm talking about God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit. They were. And he had a perfect plan even from the beginning. But time and time and time again, throughout the history, throughout the, the, the lives and the lineage of the Israelites, couldn't find one. Not one. As Minister Barnes read this morning, what shall separate us? What shall separate us from the love of God? Well, from the beginning, up until the New Testament, when Jesus was born, not one. Not one. So where do you compare with that? When you begin, and, and I'm using the reference of comparing at that, where do you think you line up with? With Moses? You don't let the people out the wilderness? 
How about Jonah? In the body of the well? Were you Jeremiah weeping? Were you Isaiah wanting those hot tongues on your uh, clothes on your tongue? Were you any of those people? How about Abraham, the father of faith? Were you any of those people? Anything like you in any of those people? So here we come to the New Testament. Jesus is born. Because God, all that time and all those histories, all those generations, and I think it was some 20 some generations before Jesus was born. And before Jesus was born, not a one was able to be saved. So I think in all those generations, if we could be Savior, he'd have found one in them one, one of them 23 generations. So he said, here comes Jesus. He sent his son, the son that was foreordained before. God just had to send him at the time. He knew. That's how he knows us. He knows that if we are apart from him, if we are apart from Jesus, if we don't have the Holy Spirit in our lives, that we can't be saved. Yeah. And see, that's why I don't care what denomination you worship. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you do not have the Holy Spirit because you could only get the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. So the, the Holy Spirit is who's leading and guiding us. He's directing us here. He's directing us there. He's our comforter. He's our God. So if you don't believe in Jesus, you don't have no comforter. You don't have no guide. You don't have no direction. So you all over the place. You all over the place. He's the only one that keep us in line with the Father. And what happens is we all over the place claiming this, claiming that, and God said, you can't serve two masters. You can't do it. You can't do it. Maybe I should rephrase that. You can if you want. You can. The word says, the fool said in his heart, in his heart that there is no God. That's what the fool says. Who are you? Are you? God didn't call you a fool, neither did I. The word said that the fool said in his heart there is no God. And the only way we can have a perfect relationship is to have the Holy Spirit. Meaning we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And everything that we say and do. So we talk about serving those two masters. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. And, and, and it says, and, and when, in my study it says that mammon is it's an aromatic word and, and it's the Greek in, in translation or in transit and it said if in English it means riches well for you what's riches your values some worth some wealth power what's riches for you what is it that you want to serve more than you want to serve God what is it is it your money do you, have, you got that much money? I don't know nobody who got that much money. I don't know nobody. I don't, I don't care how much money you got. One thing's for sure, you are not taking it with you. You can do everything you want to. And they, they even back in the old days, and when I'm talking about old days, I'm talking about back in the beginning, when they used to bury the, the payrolls and payrolls and the kings and queens with all the golds and diamonds and jewels. And, and, and then came grave robbers. Dug it, dug it up so they can get it. So what, what was sacred? What was sacred about that? But those were the values that they had. All my money, all my jewels, all my gold, and they couldn't take it with them, they, even though they thought they did. Even though, but see, that's man's thought. Man's thought, so, oh, yes, I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it in the grave with me. They're going to burn it down, and, 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 and that gold's going to be reduced to its finest. And I'm going to have it buried with me. They would take and find that gold casket and dump your bones out. And take. Take. Take that to the market and get some money. 
I mean, I don't know exactly how it's done, and it sounds somewhat facetious, but the truth of the matter is, it ain't secure. It's not secure. Only thing that's going to be secure in our life is, is our relationship with God. And when we begin to put him first in everything that we say and do, we have been, here at New Hope, we have been in the sixth chapter of Matthew for the last month. In one way or the other, we have been there. Are you following what's being said? Are you studying? I don't know what is in there for you. I can't tell you what's in there for you. But the Spirit has had us in this book, that chapter, for the last month. We ought to know from verse 1 on up to 34. We ought to know something about it. Because it's not for us. Who are you serving? Who are you serving? It ain't about lip service. We can all, all of us can talk a good game. All of us have talked a good game when we wanted to. I don't care what it was. To get something you wanted. To get away with something you did. Whatever, you, you fill in the blank. You know where you are. You know what you've done. You know what has done, been done unto you. You fill in the blank. But who are you serving? Who are you serving when things happen to you? Are you serving God in the negative? We, and that's already been talked about this morning too. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Solomon said that. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. If you want to know about it, read the whole entire book. But when it gets to the 12th chapter, he tells you that. Ain't nothing new. In the third chapter, he's telling you about it's the time for this and this and this and this and that. It's there, but it's there for a reason. And, and so Solomon, and we know that Solomon, because of his favor that he found with God, God granted unto him and gave him even more than he asked. And then here, at the end of all that he had, because see what happened with Solomon, just so that we talk about a person. Solomon began to like we do. We get comfortable in whatever it is he gave us, whether it be our job, our little income, our little cars, our little jewelry, our little clothes, our little house, our little neighborhood, our whatever. We get comfortable in those things. And so what begins to happen is that whether we believe it or not, those are the things we begin to serve. We're not serving God because those things become priority in our lives. We make sure we get them done. We get them done no matter the cost. But we don't do the same for God. Because again, he's just standing at the, Jesus standing at the door knocking. And we're not letting them in. Because we want to do this or we want to do that. That's what we're doing. But let's go back to the sixth chapter of Matthew. And I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. But when you get time, read from verse 19 down to 24. And just keep on reading. Read, read Matthew 6 in its entirety. Read it in its entirety until the Spirit tells you to stop at the verse that most signify you. But 22 says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Meaning, it said, that when I did my study, it said, it used to reference that it's like a lamp that is lit for a period of time, and then the light goes out. And when the light goes out, then the eye, which is single, singular, and that's what it's talking about, then it's no longer clear. It's like it's a cloudy something in your eye. You know, that, that scripture that tells us about having the moat or the beam in your, in, in, in your eye that you can't see, but you can see somebody else. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Now, now, now you, your, eyes, your eye is cloudy, and if your eye is cloudy, then you can't see your way. Then you become misguided. Then you're off course. You're not where the Spirit of God wants you to be. And so at that particular time, you're not serving him. You're serving whatever else is in its place. Whatever that may be. 
I am not here to tell you what it is and is not that you're serving. You know what it is. You don't have to confess to me. You have to make your confession known to him. I don't, you don't have to tell me. But in, 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 in your study, when you take this message and you go back and study, I want you to go to Luke, the 11th chapter. And I want you to go to the 33rd verse. Minister, Co-Pastor Barnes, can you read that, please? Luke, yes, 33 and 34, the 11th chapter. Light and darkness is talking about is spiritual knowledge and spiritual blindness. Yes. So what become what, what when you're full of light, you begin to grow in your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding of God, the word, what it is that He's telling you, what He's telling you not to do. But when you have spiritual blindness, you just shut everything down. And you begin to operate on what you think is right. Not about what he told you was right or wrong. You begin to operate on what you think is right. And our little knowledge don't amount to nothing. All of us collectively in here don't know nothing. Let alone one of us as an individual. We absolutely do not know anything. We think we know. And, and, and as Minister or Co-Pastor Barnes said this morning, we know in part. That's, that's the best. That's the best. And that best only come when you study, when you pray, when you meditate, when you fast. The best only comes through that. Trusting your faithfulness, your obedience to the Holy Spirit through Jesus from the Father. Only then it's just part. So you take a whole, and we know what fractions are, cut it in half. You only know the half. That other half might be oblivious to you. It's out of sight. You don't know. So you're navigating through the half you know and the other half you know, don't know about things are still going on. So if you're not trusting in God, if you're not serving him, you're getting ready to go way off course. Not just some. You're getting ready to veer way to the right. But that comes when we have this relationship we say it is not the relationship of the world God is a what kind of God he a jealous and he said I will have what no other who's your God who is your God who are you serving line the word up don't take my word for it line the word up and so that's what he's saying when he said the light of the body is the eye so if the eye is blind, the body is blind. Meaning you will, you will not get any spiritual knowledge because Satan, for one, don't want you to have it. So he wants you to remain in darkness so you won't receive it. So when you know, nobody has to, there are some things that we all do and we, or have done and we knew we were wrong when we were doing them or we know we're wrong when we're doing them now and you will not stop doing them. And that is a choice that you have made. Yes. And believe me, you, just like Jesus, when he died on the cross for you and I, God had to separate himself from Jesus because God could have no parts of sin. None. Jesus, his son, who he sent, had to take on the sins of the world, yes. meaning everybody's sin. And at that time, God had to separate himself from Jesus. So Jesus took our sins on and he bore them on the cross and he died. He died. And then we make a mockery out of his death because we still want to serve these sins. 
We want to serve Satan. Today is about choosing. But this, and we said this here in New Hope before, there's only one choice. And the choice is to serve God. But out of the choice of serving God come multiple other choices. And we can't serve God, so we got all these 50,000 choices. Guess what? You don't have 50,000 choices. You only got one. That's what Joshua was talking about. He said, you could either serve the gods of your father, meaning the Amorites and all the other gods that were out there, those idols, or you can serve the God that I serve. And when you, when you choose God, he begins to direct our path through the Holy Spirit and everything you say and do. Does that mean that we don't deviate, we don't stray? No, it does not. You can stray one second and straighten up the next. But repenting means that you've asked God for forgiveness for that thing that you strayed on. But you don't do it anymore. So that may mean we, I may have a crooked path. Today I ask for forgiveness. Tomorrow I stray. So that path goes to the right. Then he, I ask for repentance on that thing. And I, the Holy Spirit correct me on that thing. And I go off again. The next day, I stray to the right again. Not the same sin, but still a sin. I repent. He correct me again. He put me back on the path, and I stray again. But what begins to happen is, after a while, you don't stray as easy. You don't stray as often. Because that relationship has been built. It's building. It's, it's, it's building like the bones build calcium, calcium, what they call it. When you get stronger. And so you don't stray as easy. You don't stray as often. So in the midst of now, all of a sudden, in the midst of spray, uh oh, that ain't right. You wonder how, how and I think I heard uh, Pastor Barnes say once before, she was, was talking about on her knees and praying and crying, and all of a sudden, in the midst of it, it was gone. That's how he do you. In the midst of what you're going through, you, you can't even figure out why you were down there no more. Uh, you said, oh, Lord, I, I was crying. Oh, okay, Lord. Okay. Okay, you got this. Okay. I'm straight. Oh, hey. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. And at that point in time, we give it over to him and we cool. I ain't, I ain't troubled by nothing, Lord. Whatever comes, let him bring it on. What it, it is what it is. Absolutely. Good, bad, or indifferent. Well, you and I will handle this. You tell me to stand, I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand firm, Lord, because you said stand. Whatever it is, I don't care. The word says that if I am with you, I am more than the whole world against you. So you and God at all times, not sometimes, you and God at all times represent the majority. Understand that. You don't need nobody to support you. You need nobody to support you. If God is for you, you don't need nobody else. Stand firm in whatever it is he told you to do. Take a stand. That's what's read this morning. Stand still. Stand still. Know who, know who he is. When God got your back, you don't worry about it. We talked about that. Our secretary talked about that. There. See how God is. See how it is. That, and that's just, just like he orchestrated this service this morning. This is his service. We dedicate this service back to him. He already did what he was supposed to do. He already gave the secretary her homework, even though she didn't know it. Because she did it one way and he had another. He already gave Pastor Barnes the scripture. Even though she did it her way, he had another. He already gave Sister Donetta the songs to sing. Even though they didn't practice, he gave her the songs to sing. And for every one of us that was here. When I came in this morning, and, and, and I guess maybe Simon and Bo were having a little problem with the, I guess, the TV back there. And I said, we, we going to be all right this morning? Simon said, oh, I guess, more or less paraphrasing what he said. But look back there, y'all. Whatever wasn't working between Simon and his son Bo, they got it working. 
they got it working. But that's how God is. And that's, we can rest in the comfort of knowing that. And I'm going to wind this up, you all. I have so much that the Spirit, this is kind of like, and I, you all will hear probably part, this is going to be a part two and a three. Because, I mean, I was writing and writing and writing, and I said, oh, okay, Lord, I'm about to confuse myself, Lord. I mean, I had so many pages, I had to put some back. And I, and I said, well, Lord, I don't have, only have 45 minutes. Now, now, I can't say it all. I can't say all this that you want me to say, but what I do know is that he do want you to have it. So I don't know when he's going to bring it back to me to give to you all. But I want you to stand fast in, in knowing that God is faithful to his children. So, Minister Barnes, can you read 33, 35 and 36 of that same chapter of, of the 11th chapter of Luke? See, what begins to happen there is that light that he's talking about. When your body, your whole body, your eye is full of light, then we begin to walk according to how God has called us through the Holy Spirit. Everything. everything not some things, everything. Yeah. And God knows when that is. It, it, it's not your place to judge me. Don't judge what you think you see me do or not do or say or not say or go or not go or see or not see. Don't you, that's not your job to judge me. You're wasting your time if you're judging me. So what God has called you to do, you have wasted your time looking at me. I am nobody for you to look at and pattern yourself after. Pattern yourself after Jesus Christ. I don't have time to look at you and talk about what you do wrong. Because while I'm sitting there wanting to chastise you, God is chastising me because he told me not to judge. So know the same thing for yourself. While you want to run me down, you're being ran down. Not by me, but by God the Father, through the Son, through the Holy Spirit. Because you've already stepped in the wrong place. He didn't call any of us to do that. Now I'm going to have Pastor Barnes read this, but I, I have study on this, but I don't have time to get in that, to this today. So I'm going to have Pastor Barnes read for you Second Peter's, and I'm going to have her to read from uh, first chapter, verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to summarize that real quick, and I'll be closing out on this message for today. So that would be Second Peter, the first chapter, verses 1 through 10. See, 
what is saying is there is we're talking about a servant of God. We're talking about his servant Peter. Simon Peter. That's the servant. And and, and Simon, I mean Peter wrote this particular book in the uh, the Bible and he said to Simon Peter the servant is saying that through the faith the righteousness of, of God our Savior Jesus Christ that's what he's talking about in verse 1 and he said grace and peace be multiplied unto you that's God's grace not your grace not my grace God's grace and he's, he's talking about it being multiplied and he's going on down in the third verse, and he's talking about according to the divine power. Again, this is not your power. This is God's power. His power, not yours. You don't have to worry about it. That's his full provision that he's made for us. His plan that he's made for us. And, 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 and so we, when it goes down to talk about it, and it says in verse 4, whereby are, are giving unto us exceeding and great and precious promises. These are some promises that he's given us. So when you begin to read the, the rest of this, this, those verses that were uh, Pastor Barnes read, then you begin to see some 